Hi crew, welcome to the Spiritual Social. I'm Lexi, your local light worker. I'm a tarot reader and an astrologer. I'm very happy to have you here with me, my loves, for the 2024 love forecast. Yes, you've been requesting it, and I just thought I would prepare it for you by using four delicious looking options. What you have in front of you are four tea boxes. I recently discovered them at my local bookstore and I just couldn't believe it. I was just thinking about creating a love story forecast and here they are, the love story boxes. Well, this one is actually outside of the collection, but I really wanted to give you as many options as I could find. And I think that these are it. Four options, four gorgeous boxes. Inside each of these boxes, you will find a special song to put you in the mood for your 2024 love energy, love story. I have shuffled the cards while thinking of your specific option and asking Spirit the question, what is coming in your life in 2024 from a romantic point of view? I will have a second part in which I'm going to give you a career reading as well, so stick around for that. I will release it shortly after I release this other reading. But first, I wanted to tackle the subject of love. So I know that 2023 for many of us has been an incredibly tiring year. A lot of people are deciding to just tune out. Many people I've been hearing are quitting or changing jobs or kind of feeling in a very weird state of in-between, chaos, indecision, fearing the unknown. So I just thought I would come at you with a reading that can hopefully help you manifest love, even if you may not believe in love anymore, even if you're struggling with the concept. I do want to inspire you to keep a little flame burning in your heart, okay? Some of you could be here thinking like, yes, I want to do this. This is amazing. I feel like 2024 is going to be my year to fall in love. Oh my goodness, if you have that kind of an energy, please keep it going, boo. You are amazing and inspirational to all of us. So, all this being said, let me show you the options. The cards have already pre-shuffled and all of the tarot and oracle decks I'm using are linked in the description box below for your entertainment, viewing pleasure, whatever you choose to do with it. Feel free to check them out. Now for group one, I have here, this is, um, I call it like my blue castle. <laughs> so this is your option, group one. Okay, for group two, we have the flower bouquet or the wedding bouquet, the engagement bouquet. Okay, that's for you, group two. For group three, we have the specific purple flower. So it has a light lavender sheen. So this is your love story book. And then for group four, we have this white flower with some orange in it. Okay, that's your love story group four. Now, I would highly recommend that you choose just one of these options. If you choose two, you may manifest two love affairs and then you'll be faced with a really difficult decision. Or in the worst case, you may get really confused regarding the messages you are getting. So I highly recommend that you just choose one option that you keep an open mind and that whatever you hear, keep in mind that you are a powerful manifester. You can choose to reject the message and move on, or you can choose to accept the message and truly bring it into being with positive affirmations, with visualizations, by relying upon your intuition and your wonderful creative capacity. Okay, I'm just your guide here. I'm meant to inspire you. This is my job and I'm infusing this energy with as much light and love as I can. So I hope that while I was speaking, you were able to have a look at these options. And if you have made your choice, then let's jump straight into it. Before you click away, I do need to remind you that yes, I'm still open for personal readings until the end of the year. I am taking love readings as well. And keep in mind that even though we need to keep it relatively PG-13 here on YouTube, in my love readings, the ones that you can order, I can use whichever tarot decks, even the ones that have a more smutty theme. 
So keep that in mind. If you want a more in-depth kind of uh, rated R reading, <laughs> you can actually appeal to that. You can get in touch with me for that kind of a reading. Or if you have a person on your mind and you're looking to see what's going to happen next year with them, you may choose to order a synastry report. I would love to look into your chart and your person's birth chart. So keep those two options in mind if you want a more in-depth reading. Thank you so much for your love and support. It's truly a pleasure for me to create these readings. And it's wonderful to have you as part of my soul family. All this being said, let's jump into it and figure out what is 2024 bringing you in terms of love. Mm. Hi group one, welcome to your 2024 love forecast. Let's figure out what romantic surprises should you be looking forward to in the next year. So this is for those of you who are drawn to the first tea book. Inside of it, there is a song. I'm just going to open it right now and show it to you so that you may choose to either listen to the song before the reading or after. I do need to tell you that this is also my option. I felt like calling this my blue cast. So, so I felt really soulfully drawn towards this option too. I'm playing along with you. So let's see. Okay, so the song that I have for you is called North by Fever Ray. And I linked it below in the comment section as well. So go and have a listen to it, to the maybe the mood, the lyrics. This is going to be your kind of vibe <laughs> it's actually it's a pretty deep kind of song i don't know i really love it so let's see right now what cards we got okay wow we start off strong selling out spirituality the cherry blossom and the chinese peacock butterfly We have here the creator, Pisces energy, and the counterpart is the seeker, Sagittarius energy, number 44, Ascended Master. <laughs> the Lenormand wants to fall out. Wow, okay, so we have love, the rider, so travel. We also have here the void, of course, moon. Something is missing. Mm -hmm. Okay. A void, of course, moon is a moon that makes no aspects. We have here the hanged man. I'm not taking any reversals in this reading. So we see here Neptune, spirituality. Wow, the death card, transformation. Pluto, energy, Scorpio. Oh my God, fortune's wheel, the wheel of fortune, Jupiter's energy. We have three major arcana. Okay, and the two of air, anxious waiting, an indecision, receptivity as well, a form of wise passivity. Okay, so let me move the camera a little bit so that you get to see all of the cards. Hmm. I see that you will begin 2024 very focused on work. There will be a niggling feeling that you may not be doing so well at work, that you need to change something. It's kind of like you will be tempted to compromise some of the quality of your work just so that you become popular or make some money. Spirit is advising you to stay in your integrity. And why is it so important to stay in your integrity at work? Well, it's because your counterpart is going to reach you through the quality of the work you are doing. You may be somebody that, like myself, because I chose this option too, you could be using tarot, astrology on your day-to-day -day work. There may be something related to religion, spirituality. You could be writing at the moment, creating something, uh, or doing some sort of investigative work, research. And it's tempting for you next year to cut corners because you may be feeling like you are in competition with other people and thereby you want to continue to have success or you want to push forward and be the one that is chosen, the one that is promoted, the one that is um, thriving basically in an environment that is increasingly uh, limiting. 
But I see very clearly that the divine is saying you have to put your trust into the unknown and you have to keep working at your own pace, in your own rhythm, guided by your inner voice. Try not to use other people, other people's work, other projects, other ideas as some sort of barometer by which you should compare yourself. Avoid selling out. Stand in your integrity. Even if people come at you with large sums of money, even if maybe the clients, the people that you work with come to you and ask you for some ridiculous things, send them back, send them away. Do not compromise yourself. Even if you have to kind of pull yourself up by the bootstraps, you may have to kind of live in a limited environment for a while. It's important for you to stay true to who you are. Do not compromise your integrity. Keep creating at your own pace and your own rhythm and keep putting your trust into the unknown. Your faith, your spirituality is being tested. Your capacity to sti still believe in love and still do the kind of work you feel it in your heart you should be doing, even though you don't see any quick material rewards, this is going to be the big test, the big faith um, risk that you need to take next year. But I have some pretty awesome news for you your soulmate is coming in and this could be um i mean this is definitely a romantic soulmate but this could be your dharmic counterpart so dharma is basically the responsibility that we signed up to grow towards in this lifetime while karma is the accumulation of all of the consequences of our past life actions a dharmic counterpart is somebody that is meant to help you grow in a specific direction in your life. And I see very clearly here that if you are a creator, you are meeting a seeker. So somebody who may reach out to you for advice, somebody who's trying to learn from you. This may be an individual that either is not at the same spiritual level as you are and they want to kind of... Um, engage in a relationship of mentorship with you initially and then it will grow into love or it could be somebody slightly younger than you somebody that doesn't have that much experience this is not going to be somebody that is uh, don't worry like a young adult just by a couple of years that's what i'm picking up on uh three or four years younger than you potentially I'm picking up that there won't be such a huge age difference, but there is a feeling from the cards that I see here in front of me that this person is going to be either inexperienced or not at the same spiritual level as you or younger than you. There will be a slight power imbalance. You will be automatically placed in the position of the teacher in this relationship. You will be the mentor. You will be the wise one. You will be the one with the knowledge. And the other counterpart is going to be the knowledge seeker. So you create and the other person comes to absorb. And I see here clearly that patience is going to be required in this situation, but all the odds are stacked in your favor. So initially you may feel like this is just a work collaboration. You are trying to help somebody who's coming to you for help. And then you will find out that actually this person is pulling at your heartstrings and you may be the one that is actually seeking um, the emotional comfort that this person is bringing into your life. Because I see very clearly here with this card, which I'm sorry, but I can't really show fully. Um, this card tells me that love, love is coming into your town. And the rider is a symbol of travel, growth, exploration. It is also a symbol of Sagittarius energy. And we see Sagittarius here twice. Yeah, We also see Pisces and Neptune twice. And we see here Jupiter. So again, the ruler of Sagittarius is Jupiter. We see it three times actually. Wow, unbelievable. This also speaks this Jupiterian Sagittarian energy in combination with Pisces and Neptune. It does speak about higher mind energy, spirituality, academic energy, um, knowledge that is acquired years and years of trying to search for the truth. 
This may be an individual that maybe you'll meet in the academic environment for some of you. You may meet this person as you're traveling to a place of worship near a monastery, a church, a temple, a shrine. There is something here about trying to pay respects to ancestors and praying and trying to recover or regain your faith. And it's kind of like the divine is rewarding you for your devotion by helping you come in contact with a romantic counterpart who is also going to be like your dharmic teacher, somebody that is meant to push you forward in your life, to grow, to expand. I see here with the cherry blossom, usually cherries um, blossom in spring. So there may be a meeting, an encounter, a development. This person may reach out to you in spring. I would say March, most likely. I also see here that this person has a kind heart, pure intentions. We see here that this person's energy, because I interpret the seeker as your counterpart and you being the creator. So with these pink and white energies in your aura, you will be ready and primed for love. Maybe things didn't work out in your life this far with previous relationships because in your heart you were blocking yourself from giving and receiving love. There was a lot of fear. That's what I'm picking up on. But now it's the right timing. The planets are aligning. You see it here with the with three major arcanas and with the moon being released from any aspects. It could be that you're also, maybe you have a very, um, a moon that has a lot of tense aspects in your chart and the fact that the void of course moon appeared in your reading is an indication that you are being emotionally released from some painful karma you paid back your dues you paid back anything that you had to to pay back in terms of waiting pain emotional disappointments uh, maybe a difficult connection with a mother figure maybe a block related to your capacity to feel feminine to feel love to feel emotions to feel not nurtured because those are all of the areas ruled by the moon Maybe you didn't feel safe enough to open up. You felt like you needed first to establish other things in your life, like a good career and maybe even to buy a home. And then you can relax into the idea that you can share your life with somebody else. So now there is space created in your mind and in your heart to welcome love in true love, stable love, committed love, love that is spiritual as well as erotic. So... It's, it's a fantastic stroke of good luck. I see that a lot of the work you've been doing, the deep inner work, the faith that you've been keeping, the hope is going to lead to this powerful transformation and the wheel of fortune is spinning in your favor. There is the two of the air though that sits over there kind of like bringing a little bit of an energy of not knowing exactly how to proceed, not knowing how to move forward, um, anxiously waiting, watching, observing for something to happen. This is also the energy of kind of peacefully calming your mind, not allowing your mind to create unnecessary worries. So I think that next year you're going to Follow what Ram Das, the Western philosopher, uh, was usually saying in his work. You need to just quiet the mind and get into your heart. And I think that this is what you're going to be doing. And I feel like your heart has healed enough. Um, there is this feeling that... Um, oh God, I'm getting another message in a second. Just let me finish the sentence. So... I feel like you are ready to get into your heart because your heart has done healing and it's no longer painful to follow your heart. It's no longer painful to feel things because maybe in the past I feel like you were trying to feel but there was like a brick wall around your heart. Now, another thing that I'm noticing here is that she is wearing this blouse that has this stain and this stain to me has the colors black, red, and there also seems to be a tinge of yellow. And if I'm not mistaken, these are the colors of the flag of Germany. So it could be that your counterpart could be German. They may have been born in Germany or they are traveling from Germany 
to see you or to get in touch with you germany is significant for some reason okay so just needed to say that i feel like uh, this person that is coming into your life is somebody new is not somebody from the past this is not a uh, rehashing of an old relationship i see that this person enjoys wearing dark green dark blue and purple color clothes there is a feeling that this individual um could have a tattoo yeah they may have a tattoo of a peacock or of a chinese symbol um i feel that this individual is just like it's just your reward for some reason i'm so drawn to the number 44 which is the number of stability if you think about beyonce's album four it's all about that stability creating a home building a foundation a relationship and a career that endures so yeah doubled this energy is amplified um pluto here talks about a deep deep transformation of your heart it's kind of like you may have been feeling like you were very low on energy in 2023, like you were kind of a, a walking dead, like something inside of you died, but it was only because it was making space for this love to come in. So in 2024, it's going to be the rebirth period. So the Phoenix is rising because as you know, Pluto and the death card number 13 and major arcana represents the Phoenix rising from its ashes. After a painful death, you are rising back up as a renewed individual. You had to sacrifice something. You had to let something go. And I think it was an attachment to pain, an attachment to a feeling that I'll never find love. I don't know if I'm able to love. I don't know if I can open my heart. It's too scary. What am I going to do? But I feel like next year there will be so much wind in your sails and you're just going to just go for it. You know, this person will appear in your life and there will be no hesitation. There will be no doubts. There'll be no drama. It's like you, you will see this person and you're going to be like, Okay, I feel like something special is happening here. Again, the relationship is going to develop slowly, but you will know from the beginning that this is a very special individual. And from the beginning, you will feel a sense of purpose and familiarity. So even if this individual comes and approaches you, like I said at the beginning, from a purely professional point of view initially, asking for your help with a matter regarding spirituality, I feel like by the end of 2024 you may have realized that you guys have feelings for each other and you may have decided to just step boldly into this relationship and it's good to take your time with this because i feel like this is a person that's coming to stay with you i feel that you guys are going to have souls that are very strongly linked um definitely it's kind of like this energy that you will feel like you're growing in this relationship with this person, like possibilities are opening up from the moment you meet them. This person will feel inspired by you and will look up to you and your knowledge and your life experience, which they are eager to soak up. And you are going to feel like this person is coming and like rebirthing you, like bringing you life force and vitality. And like, even if you felt like you're your prana and your acne like your life force your mojo however you want to call it if it was dormant if you felt like you were hibernating like you were just zombieing around you may not have felt a lot of desire for anyone or anything i feel like this person is coming to just spark you right back up you know bring you back up to life um i feel like your health will improve you may even go through a glow up the moment you meet this person you may be this kind of person that constantly gives and you often feel quite drained by the energies that come into your life constantly kind of eating up your vitality but for the first time i think in your life or at least in your romantic situation this is a person that comes to give you energy to help you keep going this is a person that will give to you so that you can replenish yourself and help others as well so it's a really really wonderful energy and i really want you to look forward to springtime i feel like springtime is gonna be a rebirth 
it's going to be pretty amazing most likely this person may be a Sagittarius most likely you could be a Piscean or you can flip the roles if you're a Sagittarius listening to this then your counterpart is going to be a Piscean I also see here some strong Pluto and Jupiter vibes so you guys may have some sort of Pluto Jupiter conjunction which talks about hidden depths hidden treasures treasures that are of an emotional kind something that it lies the knowledge that lies hidden deep in our DNA because Pluto and Scorpio energy represents the genetic code of the zodiac wow <laughs> okay I feel like I'm going to end it here I hope you have enjoyed your 2024 forecast I may do another check-in at the later point in time usually spirit only allows me to see as far as six to maximum eight months in the future so i hope that this helped i hope it's inspiring you let me know down in the comments where you find yourself with your love energy and thank you so much for listening see you in my next one bye bye hi group two welcome to your love forecast for the year 2024 i'm so happy to have you here with me thank you for being here so this is for those of you that were drawn to the flower bouquet so inside of this tea box i have a special song for you i'm going to show it to you first so you can decide whether you want to listen to the song before you dive into the reading or after pay attention to the lyrics as well of the song because they may hold extra messages for you oh okay so you got it's happening again by agnes obel the song will be linked in the comment section below so please make sure to remember to listen to it if you are leaving it towards the end of the reading i'm going to put your box over here and let's dive straight into your cards and see what messages they offer how teachable are you number nine okay protection the eucalyptus and the monarch butterfly we have the advocate as your energy and we have wow the hero as your person's energy the contrast between these two flowers wow the color is amazing now we also have oh beautiful the garden number 15 the Lenormand shows us the tree, which fits with the garden, number five. So a change, a big change. And then we have Black Moon Lilith, mystery. And we also have here the two of fire. The three of fire. <laughs> okay, it's growing. <laughs> we have the ace of air. And the six of water okay okay so keep in mind i'm talking here about love i'm not talking about toxicity i know that oftentimes when i do say something about the past then a past lover returning a lot of you comment and actually say that you don't want the toxic ex to enter your life it's not about a toxic ex a toxic ex never loved you or they loved you in a way that is distorted and you should stay away from them but i see very clearly here that this is a situation where indeed somebody from your past is returning in 2024 i feel like you will be able to sit on an equal footing with somebody from the past with whom you may have had a missed opportunity so this could be somebody from your past in this lifetime or somebody from a previous lifetime that is returning because they have some unfinished business with you some unfinished romantic business with you now the cards are exceedingly positive i don't see anything that terrifies me here we could say a little bit that black moon lilith could bring the energy of ruin the energy of being seen as a femme fatale or as a temptress that is not being given her proper respect and worth because you know that in the majority of societies in the world people still continue to separate women in the image of the madonna or the whore so lilith would fall into the whore category but that's just a prejudice that's an archetype that we are slowly growing out of hopefully <laughs> i have my faith in you gen z 
But at the same time, I feel like Lilith will color your relationship with a lot of sensual excitement and attraction, almost to the point of obsession. And it would make one of you feel like they are losing control and they don't enjoy it or that they could ruin themselves if they pursue this love connection. At the same time, I see that you are going to figure out a way in which you are going to change the way you think about love and change the way you talk to a person about your feelings. The Six of Water is a really nostalgic energy. It talks about Cancerian vibes, the moon, home-based energies, nurturing, the womb, things that make us feel safe, held, and contained. While the Ace of Air is the energy of Pegasus, and Pegasus was used as a means of transport for the, by the ancient Greeks, but he was also bringing with it the energy of the rainbow, changing the weather so that it would actually bring a gust of fresh air. And it was a sight to behold, a beautiful, gorgeous, winged white horse that was calling in and moving the sun with it at the same time. So this is about more light, more hope, more optimism coming into your love life. A connection with somebody that you know from either your deep past or from your recent past is returning into your life in order for you to understand it in a different way. Now the roles have changed, you have gained more experience. I feel like if in the past there was a power imbalance between you and this person that is returning, now you guys are on an equal footing. If one of you had more money than the other one, now you both are making the same kind of income. If one of you had more sensual experience than the other one, now you both are on the same level. I feel like there is nothing for you to actually be worried about, but there will be a type of thinking from the past that will keep you a little bit shackled. When you see this person initially, you are going to treat this connection with extreme caution. You are going to adopt a very rational approach and you're going to make this person work for it. Um, I kind of feel like you're going to want to see all the receipts. There may have been an issue here of broken trust in the past and now you are going to make this person do the work to help you trust them again. And I think that this is working for both of your benefit. I do feel like this individual is coming in to step up their game with the hero energy. This is something undeniable. This is not an individual that you can so easily push to the side and say, no, 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 <laughs> bye bye. You know, what's done, it's over with. I feel like a part of you actually wanted to see a positive change in this individual. And here they are. I also feel like this person is feeling quite eager to settle down and have a family. I'm not sure exactly if there was any fertility issues or discussions about settling down and this person rejected you in the past, but I see that they're coming back with a bud. Okay, so this may be a child from another connection, but most likely this will be thoughts of fertility, thoughts of wanting to settle down and have a child with you. So I feel that for the majority of you, this will be the case. For others of you, you're going to find out or maybe you already know that this person has a child, but they may decide to take the child in the connection with you. I don't know how many of you are open-minded to this idea, but you could be reconnecting with an ex or somebody that was the one that got away who in the meantime had a child with another person and they are separating from that person and coming back to choose you but they have the baby from the other connection. So that's just for a small group of you from the large majority of you that will choose this pile. For the large majority of you, I see that this is going to be thoughts of having a child with you and wanting to kind of seed this energy into your connection. Now, I also see that this person is bringing a very interesting energy of protection into your life. So for some reason, maybe this person wasn't able to give you the time of day in the past. Maybe um, they were distracted by other things. What I am picking up very strongly is that this person had to make a decision and they couldn't. And you felt abandoned. You felt neglected. It brought up some issues um, potentially stemming from your own psychological development as you were growing growing up and you had to heal those things. You had to spend some time maybe reading self-care books, maybe listening to all sorts of spiritual material, um, 
you may have actually started getting into tarot and astrology as a consequence of you needing to heal um, those parts of you that were triggered by this connection with this person. Some of you may think that you are in a twin flame connection with this individual, a higher order spiritual soulmate. And I would say that you're not wrong. There is a feeling that if you could not even communicate properly with this person in the past now it's kind of like the universe is green lighting this connection with the advocate and the hero we have here some very strong energies this is aries and leo energy so you guys may be born with these sun signs or it could be that you are just individuals that kind of borrow from that energy uh, you may live your life like an Aries or like a Leo um, I feel like in this connection these are going to be the roles that you adopt one of you is very focused on stability security safety because we have here the color of Muladhara the root chakra the energy point in our body that when disturbed is bringing a lot of chaos in our life while the other one has the energy of Manipura, the solar plexus chakra. This is the energy of confidence, creativity, boldly taking risks and walking into the unknown. So we're seeing here two lower chakras that are strongly activated. One of you is going to give confidence to the other one, while the other one is going to make the, um, the other counterpart feel safe and protected. So... I feel that if you were wishing for your person to be a bit more responsible, to choose you, to communicate with you more clearly and to protect you, I feel like your wish is coming true. There is very strong, um, there is a very strong intimate desire. This person is also coming back because they are feeling quite turned on, quite horny. Um, if you guys had any intimate contact in the past, they want to have more of that, okay? It's kind of like... They tried with somebody else and it wasn't as fulfilling as it is with you. If you never had physical intimate contact, here it is. It's coming in, okay? So I feel like this person is going to try to break through your defenses. You are going to be a little bit armored, a little bit walled up when this individual appears. And I think that this is because you suffered in the past when this person left or was not even able to make a decision. And I feel like right now there is the ample opportunity for your connection to grow. Just like a garden, you planted some seeds and now they are growing and you're able to enjoy the fruits, the flowers, all of the rewards of your hard work. In the past, maybe the connection between the two of you was like a little sapling. It was fragile, vulnerable. You didn't know if it will survive the winter. But now look. It has survived and it has grown into a tree under whose shade you can both cool off during summertime or you can find protection during the rain in autumn. So there is just a feeling that seasons had to pass, time had to pass and you guys are actually building something really solid. And even though you did not spend this time together physically, in your souls, in your minds, you kept thinking about each other. You kept manifesting this protection. Now, I see here another clue. Eucalyptus is usually a plant that is native to Australia, um, at least from my knowledge. And I feel like this individual could be from Australia, could travel from Australia to meet you. You might have met this person in Australia. I'm also picking up on the fact that one of you may be studying or working in Australia and maybe they went there for a period of time and now they are finally released from the contract. They have graduated and they are returning back home. And the first thing on this person's mind is, I want to be with you. So I feel like you had to go a little bit through the ringer in this connection. You were being taught a deep lesson in patience, a deep lesson in forgiveness, and on how to handle your triggers, how to behave when yet another individual that you put your trust and faith into seems to be walking away from you. So that was a wound that you needed to identify and focus upon. And I know that this person, you may feel like this person brought this wound back up in your life, but I'm here to let you know that this person was doing you a favor. Sometimes people are meant to trigger us so that we can see what else needs work in ourselves. 
how can we find a creative way to deal with the problem, to deal with, to find a solution to that part of ourselves that feels neglected, unloved, unwanted. So what will initially begin like a careful exploration as 2024 develops and continues will actually turn into a really fun explorative time. I feel like you're going to travel a lot with this counterpart and this is how you guys are going to rebuild your trust and this is how you're going to relearn your love styles, your love languages. I don't think that in the past you actually knew this person very well. It took you a while. It took this person a while. Let me move the camera so you see the giraffe card as well. Um, I'm also feeling that with the giraffe here, there may be um, an indication that this person could come from Africa and specifically South Africa is coming to mind. So uh, again, another clue related to the geography of this person to help you understand who they may be. But all in all, I see here that this is a connection that is being given a second chance. And this time, it has all the ample opportunities to grow. It is a tree that has been steadily growing in the garden of your souls. And even though you may have been separated, neither of you stop thinking of the other one. And I feel that what was initially a cautious exploration is going to turn into a forest fire of adventure. You guys are going to learn to communicate with each other differently. You're going to change your mind. And as you change your mind, there will be some deep healing happening in your heart. I feel like this person may have had some sort of Saturn placements to either your sun, your moon, or your Venus. So initially, you felt this strong sense of responsibility and kind of fate when you met this person. But you may have been separated due to the influence of Saturn in your birth charts, in your sinistry. So either your person had Saturn conjunct your Venus or you had your Sun or Moon conjunct your person Saturn. There may have been a Saturn link there. And usually Saturn separates, triggers you and allows you to do the work by yourself. And then when the timing is right in divine order, it brings you right back up with this person so that you can put into action everything that you had to figure out on your own. And I know this is not at all fun. Saturn is a hard taskmaster. It wants results. It wants pragmatic, achievable, tangible results after it drains you of vitality and resources. So you have to put in a lot of work and a lot of effort to show up and to keep pushing forward in spite of any any rewards, any quick rewards at least. But what Saturn gives you lasts a lifetime. So this is a connection that in spite of the fact that you guys were tested, even though there may have been pain, even though there may have been separation. And when I'm talking about pain, I'm not talking about the pain of living next to a person that insults you or treats you like crap. The pain of actually needing to let go of somebody that you thought was meant to be for you. But somehow things didn't work out. Other things intervened. You were constantly pushed away from one another by other people, by circumstances, by work, by study. That's the kind of pain I'm talking here about. The longing, the yearning to be with one another. It's not the pain of actually needing to stay in a connection with somebody that treats you like a doormat. Never Never do that, okay? That is demeaning to your light and to your spirit. And you should walk away as soon as possible. And if you can't do it by yourself, seek some help because there are so many people out there willing to help you escape that kind of a toxic relationship, okay? We need to learn the difference between these two types of um, kind of longing and yearning. Um, there is a type of emotional pain that is kind of like destined and unavoidable, but there is a type of pain into which we tend to fall due to some psychological wounding in our past and we tend to kind of re-traumatize ourselves by staying into toxic relationships. Those are two very different things, okay? I am talking about the first one. So separated because of circumstances. It's almost like if your love story happened in the 40s, you may have been separated by war, for example. I'm not sure if this is the case at the moment. There are a couple of conflicts happening in the world, some pretty horrifying wars. Um, I'm not sure if that applies to your situation. I can't really see it. But there is a force at work here, some sort of karmic clock that is keeping you guys 
in two different paths at the moment. But in 2024, I see that you guys are being given an opportunity to reconnect. Wow. I'm going to end here before I run out of breath. I hope you have enjoyed this message. Comment down below and let me know what is your situation, what is your love energy at the moment. Feel free to bookmark this reading and come back to it six months from now and let me know if it actually came true. I'd be super curious to hear your accounts. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye. Hi, Group 3. Welcome to your 2024 love forecast. We are going to figure out what can you expect in terms of love for next year. So this is for those of you that were drawn to this love story tea box. We have here the lavender purple flower. I don't exactly know the name of this flower. I would say it's a lily, potentially. In Romanian, we would call it a crin. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's a beautiful box, no matter what the name of the flower is. And inside of it, I have a song for you. The song will be linked in the comment section below, so you can figure out whether you want to listen to it before or after you hear the messages. I would strongly recommend that you don't forget to listen to the song and to the lyrics especially, because there may be an additional message there for you to inspire you to manifest love. So, all this being said, let's see. Okay, oh, you got Melody X by Bonaparte. Gorgeous, gorgeous song. You keep the light on, you keep the light on. It's beautiful, you should listen to it. I'm not going to kind of torture you with my singing skills. Let's dive straight into the cards and see what can you look forward to in 2024. I'm kind of picking up on some hesitation, some fear. <laughs> You may be afraid to hear. Maybe you're so tired. Oh God, yes, rejection. Let's see. We have persistence, euphorbia, and the African swallowtail butterfly. Okay, so we see how linked they are already. Now your energy is the following. The innovator, Aquarius energy, number 42. And we also have here the flirt. <laughs> this is beautiful. So if I'm not mistaken, this is either Pisces or Sagittarian energy. Now we also have here yin and yang counterparts. Two peas in the pod fitting perfectly with a, pa uh, with a partner. From the Lenormand, we have the cross. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have here the sixth house, routine, the domain of Virgo. We also have the ace of water. Oh, beautiful. The messenger of air. The emperor. Wow, Aries energy. And we also have oh, <laughs> the two of water, the two of cups. Okay, okay. I'm going to move the camera right now so you can so you can see it. Yes, so okay, I can tell you right off the bat it's going to get so much better, okay? My love, I feel like you were already hesitant on clicking on this video, even choosing this option. Maybe you got really spooked when you saw the rejection. I feel some of you will click away from the reading and come back to it. <laughs> In which case, don't worry, I'm here patiently waiting for you to come back because there's nothing for you to worry about. I feel like you've been through the through the ringer, you've been tested in love. A lot of us are, to be honest, but it's kind of like you feel like you have only bad luck in love. With number 13 and the rejection energy, it's kind of like either you had a pattern of only being attracted to people that were meant to break your heart, or it's kind of like, and you weren't even aware of that. It's kind of like you, you, and I keep repeating, it's kind of like, yeah, there is such a self-consciousness here, such a feeling of wanting to be with the perfect partner, but always meeting people that disappoint you, trying to live up to really high expectations. I feel like in 2024, you are going to let go of such expectations because you will understand that they will only bring you sadness. You are going to continue to move forward with your life and stay determined. Follow the course. 
do not give up completely on love. I don't think that you're going to invest so much energy in searching for love, which will have the beautiful consequence that love is going to find you. You will no longer need to chase it. It will pursue you because, you know, the saying that which we chase also seeks us. So you are going to change something very important about your relationship to love and the way in which you have been approaching your personal connections. It's not going to be a case of doing something extreme or doing something completely different than what you were doing. It's going to be a case of focusing on what really matters in your life, conserving your energy, moving forward with determination, not allowing anybody to treat you badly, not allowing people to um, kind of like even at work pay you poorly. You are just going to hold your ground. I feel like you will go one level up in your relationship to yourself, to your self-worth. And I feel that this is going to attract romantic attention. Initially, this romantic attention is going to be quite casual. You're not going to treat it very seriously. I feel like you're going to make love less of a priority at the beginning of the year, mostly because you're still trying to mend your broken heart. In the past, you may have actually placed love as the main priority in your life. Finding your soulmate was the most important thing. But after a couple of rejections, which were ultimately just tests meant to help you kind of do some work at changing your high expectations and love. Now you finally cross that test and you have graduated and you'll be happy to know that in 2024 you may begin the year with low expectations in terms of love or romantic fulfillment but high expectations from yourself to keep achieving things. I feel like with work things are going to go really well but Stick around because I will have a forecast for your career and money coming soon. And as a consequence of things working really well at work, you're not going to be so bothered about the romantic aspects. You're going to just focus on what is working, what is positive, what requires your energy. And you're not going to spend your time daydreaming as much as you used to. Um, on some level that can feel a little bit weird maybe you may not feel so much like yourself but I feel like this realistic pragmatic approach is actually working in your benefit because it's allowing the other person to chase you the other person to come towards you it's allowing you to see a counterpart a romantic counterpart for who they really are not for who you would like them to be or comparing them with unapproachable standards of beauty and love and i feel like love is definitely in the cards for you true love equal love the love of a counterpart of a soulmate yeah so giving and receiving in the same amount and i feel like uh, what initially begins as a casual flirtation turns into something increasingly serious i feel like your connection will be one in which because you are still trying to detach from rejection, you may push this person away initially. You may think um, they're cute, but at the same time, I'm not looking for love. My heart is closed. I don't want to think about love anymore. And this person will continue to pursue you, which you will find incredibly flattering. But I think that this individual may come with a certain responsibility. The cross usually shows something heavy that we have to bear and endure. And I feel like in this connection, what has to be endured is related to a workplace situation. You may actually develop a crush or your boss may begin flirting with you. Okay, so this could be something quite fascinating because as things are working really well for you um, in your professional environment, all of a sudden somebody that is in a position of power is going to take an interest in you. And I have a feeling that you may be a little bit um, irritated by this development initially. There could be certain arguments in which you're going to try to um, create boundaries between you and this person. But I feel like the attraction will be undeniable. And I feel like um, you're just going to fall deeper and deeper in love with this individual. And that's going to be something that they will share for you as well. Normally, the Emperor is an Aries card, 
But I see here Leo energy strongly represented in this deck, the good tarot. So you may crush on an Aries, on a Leo, on a fire sign. Um, as I said here with the flirt, um, I'm getting a couple of energies. So I'm reading the cards intuitively, not as they appear in the Oracle of Roses. But the flirt... I see here a combination of somebody who has Piscean, Libra, and Leo energy inside of themselves. Um, and I see you as being a little bit the opposite of that with Aquarius energy, very strongly representative. I also feel that this may be a consequence, like this changes in your mentality and in your approach to love. It's going to happen as a consequence of the transit of Pluto in the sign of Aquarius, which will mark uh, the vast majority of next year. So next year is going to be a whole growth spurt for all of us as a collective trying to get attached and um, kind of trying to understand how to handle the Pluto and Aquarius energy, which is going to begin a cycle that will last for the next two decades. So I'm seeing a connection that will be healing for you but may also begin at work, a connection that you may need to figure out how to navigate because it will be quite sensitive. You guys will have this professional boundary. I feel that the love will be undeniable. I mean, you have both the Ace of Water and the Two of Water. So something that begins with joyfulness, flirtatiousness, a casual kind of like encounter is going to turn into true love. Yeah, something that may even make you think, oh my God, I found my spouse. I found my partner. The emperor does represent the spouse in a love reading as well. He's like the ideal soulmate, the ideal counterpart. But there is a cross to bear. This person may already be married or in a connection with somebody else. So you guys are going to have to figure out how are you going to make things work. This person may live at a distance from you or there may be the professional boundary between the two of you. You are an employee and you love your job because it gives you a lot of satisfaction when other things in your life may have only made you feel rejected. You want to persevere with your career because you enjoy it. But the person that kind of holds the keys to your advancements is falling in love with you, which is complicating the situation a little bit. I'm here to let you know, group three, that if you think that 2024 will be a boring, same old, same old year for you. Nah, -uh. <laughs> okay, nah. -uh. I see here the development of some really interesting things in your life, but you're going to learn how to give and receive. You are going to learn how to negotiate, how to reach mutually pleasing compromises. And it's fascinating because from next year, we will have a lot of air energy in the skies, not only because Pluto is changing signs from Capricorn into Aquarius, but also because in the middle of the year, Jupiter is switching from Taurus into Gemini. So Pluto and Aquarius in a beautiful trine in an aspect of support with Jupiter and Gemini is going to be a lot about conversations, communications, reading, writing, poetry, and kind of making love to the person's mind before you make love to their body so all of this energy is going to be quite like forward thinking in love you may begin thinking that nah i don't think that there's going to be anything serious with this person and by the end of 2024 you may already be engaged with them there will be some hurdles there will be some issues there to overcome most of these issues in your case will come from being triggered and having been rejected in the past so you're going to have to work against any tendency you may have to self-sabotage this love, any tendency you may have to push this person away and reject them where you were also rejected by others in the past. So be mindful of that. And the other issue with your person is that they may come with some baggage, some emotional baggage due to the fact that they could already be in a connection with somebody else. They may be married and they are on the brink of separation or they could be this kind of individual that in the past has been using their power to hook up with people at work. But you're the game changer because I see here true love markers for you. So this is not just a hookup at work. This is not just an affair. This is something with long-term potential. True love indicated here, yin and yang. You will both complete each other. Yeah, one of you is going to be the feminine principle, the other one the masculine principle, no matter what you're actually 
what your actual biological gender is. I feel like you both are going to fall into these extremes that will complement each other beautifully. Wow. I'm going to leave the message here. Oh, one thing I need to say is that religion may play a really big part in your connection. So religious boundaries, professional boundaries, but ultimately you will figure things out because I see here that you guys are going to be very serious about each other as the year progresses. Okay, I'm going to end the reading here. This is exciting. This is interesting, I would say. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this. What is your love energy at the moment? And thank you so much for listening. I cannot wait to see you in my next one. Take care, group three. Bye bye. Hey, four. Welcome to your love forecast for 2024. So this is a reading for those of you that were drawn to this love story tea box with the white flowers with some orange petals in the background as well. This is how it looks like. So inside of this box, I have a special song for you that can hopefully inspire you or help you manifest love, something to make you dream. And I'm going to show you the song at the beginning of the reading so you can choose whether you want to listen to the song before or after you hear the messages. So let's see, what song did you get? Okay, uh, okay, you got an oldie but goldie. We have here, It Had To Be You by Julie London. So the Julie London version is a little bit more sensual than the Frank Sinatra one, at least so I believe. It really, I don't know, like she really expresses the words in a more interesting way, passionate, maybe kind of slow burning kind of way. Anyway, I'll let you be the judge of that. I am linking the song in the comment section below, so feel free to listen to it. And the lyrics specifically can give you another indication as to what may happen between you and a partner in 2024. So let's see, what cards were you dealt? We have here alchemy, number 25. Okay, so we begin very strongly with magic. And then we see here pride, the amaryllis, uh, or the gaudy commodore butterfly. And my cat Luna has started trilling, which is interesting. I see that you will take the role of the caregiver, number 33, which is an ascended master number of compassionate communication. And your partner will take the role of the artist. Wonderful. So I see here Cancer and Pisces energy, compatible water signs. Okay, let's see. We have here Worthiness, number 35. Some of you could be the sage or your person is going to be the sage. 35 years old. We also have here the mountain. Okay, so a little bit of an obstacle to climb. We also have Capricorn, I use. It's fascinating because from next year, Pluto will leave the sign of Capricorn and move into Aquarius. We have here the messenger of water. So again, more water sign energy. The king of fire. Okay, we have some fire sign energy. Ah, oh, the magician, willpower, and the queen of air. Oh, I see three people involved. What is going on here? I really love the fact that... I'm just going to move it so you see all of the cards. There we go. I really love the fact that we have the magician and alchemy in the same reading. This is incredible. And we have one of the sweetest energies in the court cards, one of the most charismatic, proud, and kind of brave, but we also have here one of the most intelligent and tactful energy, the queen of air. So I see here a water sign, a fire sign, and an air sign. I see here somebody that may use love spells. I see a sense of wounded pride and I see two people coming together against all odds. In 2024, group four, you could enter into a three-party connection even without you knowing. I have a feeling that you're going to be very drawn towards an individual that most likely will be older than you. I see here with Capricorn, 
ruled by Saturn. This is the energy of somebody wiser, older, richer, with more experience. I see here two bearded men and an older lady. So depending on what preference you have in love, I'm reading here for a large collective, uh, mostly of heterosexual people. So keep that in mind, apply it to your circumstances. But there is some, um, uh, I'm picking up on the fact that you will be the chosen one out of um, this love triangle. I feel that some of you are going to try to experiment with um, either having an open connection with your current partner and, either, and others of you are going to really see a wonderful opportunity with a person that has more experience, is wiser, has a come to daddy kind of vibe about them. But you may end up feeling a little bit hurt because you will find out that this person has some unfinished business with an ex or there is another person interfering. Um, eventually, I think that you are going to be the chosen person, but you may have to go through a little bit of discomfort. I'm telling you right now, so you know, some discomfort regarding um, finding out about this other person, feeling like you're a little bit not the number one priority. The way in which you will react is going to determine the measure of this connection because I feel like uh, the universe is testing your self-worth. How worthy do you feel you are to be in an exclusive connection with somebody that is older, wiser, richer than you? Are you going to sell yourself short? Are you going to compromise your feelings over what this other individual wants? Or are you going to draw some healthy boundaries? And even though you may need to wait a little bit, even though you may be a little bit disappointed, you are going to wait until this person has separated from all the emotional baggage of the past and comes towards you with a clear mind, an open heart, and also, I feel like this person is going to come with um, a large savings account as well. Um, so I feel like the way in which you decide to act is going to determine how this person will treat you. So if you stand up for yourself, you may delay a little bit the accomplishment of this connection, but it will work in your benefit because you will preserve your self-worth. Your relationship to yourself is going to be maintained. I see here that you are like if you if you are going to fall into this um, energy of a wounded pride kind of person, don't worry about that. This is not something you need to train yourself out of feeling. And for some reason in your reading, my cat started creating noise. Um, so again, there will be interruptions, yeah? I'm not seeing here that 2024 in terms of love is going to be such smooth sailing for you. But you will have a significant relationship that is worth fighting for. And in spite of the fact that there will be tests of worthiness, the way in which you respond is going to help you overcome this mountain or, or allow it to crush you down. So I would strongly recommend that you delay gratification, that you don't just immediately sleep with this person, even though you may want to with everything in your body. I feel like it would be better for you to play it cool and lay low until this person figures out how to complete this previous connection. And you can maintain contact, you can maintain a friendly approach, you can flirt, but I would strongly recommend not to just dive straight into this connection, give it your all, play all your cards on the table, and then end up being brokenhearted and feeling used and feeling like you're a third wheel to this connection, when in reality you are worth so much more than that. I feel like during the period of waiting for this person to kind of figure out what's going on with their ex, you are going to cast some love spells. You're going to dive into this um, occult side of the use of magic in love. And you may actually start experimenting a little bit with how to get the person to think only of you and how to get them to choose you and kind of how to influence their willpower a little bit. But one thing I need to say is that you need to watch out because this person could pay somebody else to get a tarot reading on you or pay um, an occult teacher to create some love spells. So <laughs> I feel like this energy will be mirrored. 
If you're trying to play dirty to get this person to want you more over and above somebody else, this person is going to do the same to you, okay? So just be mindful because you could be the one enchanted as well as your person that you're trying to enchant. But all in all, like overall, sorry, for some reason, I feel like you may be dealing with somebody who is either um, speaking a different language than you, they will be speaking a different language than you, or they could have a speech impediment. Maybe they have some sort of problem with their chin, uh, with their lips when you meet them. They may have some teeth um, problem that they're trying to solve. They may not be able to speak very clearly or there may be some pain related to how they speak. Um, but I think that this is gradually going to heal and you guys are going to be able to communicate more easily. There will be declarations of love. This person will be quite romantic and try to sweep you off your feet. You may be dealing here with a Capricorn with some uh, fire sign energy, also with um, Cancerian or Pisces energy in their chart. So this person, for example, could be a Capricorn sun with a Pisces ascendant and a moon in Aries, for example. So any of these energies could be strongly represented. I'm here to let you know that if you stay determined, and if you trust in your worthiness, if you're patiently allowing this person to come towards you and come clean, yeah, I feel like the situation is going to work exactly as you wanted it to. But if you act too impulsive, if you rush this person, and if you don't see just how valuable you are as a human being, then I feel that you are going to end up in a very uncomfortable trade-off Um it's going to be a deeper lesson. Um, I feel you may end up separating from this individual and there will be bitterness involved. So I think that next year the universe is giving you a lot of willpower regarding what you should be doing in your love life. And it's up to you eventually what choices you want to make. I would say delay the gratification, wait for this person to clear up their life. I don't think that you're going to have to wait years and years. Um, I do think that there will be this energy of wanting to pair up with someone better because we have the number 22 which is the number of union coming together cooperation collaboration but we also have number 33 which is about compromise creative solutions problem solving so by talking about what each of you wants by being open and honest and clear with this individual in spite of the fact that they may be already connected with somebody else by just putting forth and prioritizing communication from the heart rather than bearing your body before you actually talk to this person about your values that will be the recipe of success okay wise communication considerate compromises meeting this person halfway yeah this is going to get you the relationship the safety the protection and i also feel like this person may want to become the provider or you may want to fall into a connection where this person is the main provider maybe that's why you choose them that's why you kind of tend to want to be with them so strongly that's perfectly fine it's just keep in mind that this person needs to sort out their issues their heart will belong to you they will feel strongly attracted to you i feel like there's not that much love between your partner and this individual that they are kind of stringing along up until the moment when they meet you i also feel that this person could inspire you to show off your spiritual artistic side um, I feel like if you are an individual that wants to dedicate more time on their hobbies, on their artistic nature, or maybe you just need somebody to provide the financial material support for a while as you are trying to make it into the art world or as a musician, as an actor, as a singer, as a performer, then this person is going to be that individual that will provide you the solid ground. And yeah, I think that you have all chances of succeeding with this person by your side. This person is going to want to show you off. I think that they will believe that you're incredibly good looking, very attractive, very beautiful. They will be drawn to your um, vitality and youthfulness, especially. Um, and it's kind of like you're going to bring some excitement and adventure into their life, some creativity, and they're going to provide you with stability, comfort, loyalty. But it's just 
you know, keep keep in mind the situation with the Queen of Air, which I don't see as your energy. I see as somebody else that could interfere with your situation. A person who um, could be quite emotionally restrained, but mentally could be quite direct and bold and could easily destroy you with words. You know, that's kind of uh, the energy. The Queen of Air could also be a legal representative, a person that represents your person, for example, in a divorce settlement. So we're also seeing here the energy of somebody that fights on the behalf of your person by using the rule of law. So I do think that ultimately you guys will be coming together. The caregiver will make a beautiful home with the artist. I feel that the magician and alchemy, you guys are going to be brought together in magical and seen ways. As long as you understand who you are, as long as you stand in your worth, you will be able to overcome this mountain that will appear between you and the object of your affection. Okay, because the mountain is just temporary. You just need patience and determination and you will climb over it. So you will be able to resolve this three-party situation in a way that is worthy, in a way that is loving, and in a way that shows yes, I want to be with you. This is not just a hit it and quit it kind of situation. Because while you are looking for a loyal and determined person in this individual, I feel that the universe is also testing your loyalty, your determination to stick true to who you are, to maintain a healthy sense of self-worth and appropriate boundaries, even with a person that seems too good to be true. Okay? Wow. Wow. This is what I had for you. Group four, comment down below and let me know what you thought of this reading. <laughs> I don't know why, but my speech was a little bit weird in your reading. I'm also getting a little bit tired because this is the fourth reading. Um, but most likely this will be a connection with an individual that speaks a different language than you. So there may be some um, misunderstandings that happen, you know, as in, as they always do in um, international connections. But Ultimately, love will win. Yeah, we see here the king of fire ready to give his heart to you. So wonderful. I wish you all the best. I hope you can manifest this if you have enjoyed this message. Until next time, I cannot wait to see you in my next one. Take care. Bye bye.